How have I never done this before? Of all the times I've been inside Celtic Park for matches and for other little events and like attractions and stuff, I've never done the full Celtic Park stadium tour. It absolutely amazes me that stadium tours are such a big part of my channel, yet I've never done the full one here at Parkhead. And it's due to a couple of reasons. Of course, I've only really lived in Scotland since the pandemic begun and the stadium tours properly have only really just started up again over the past few months. I have done a corporate lunch where you get a walk out onto the pitch as part of your lunch and day I think it costs an extra fiver um, I'll link all this this stuff below that I'm about to talk about um, but again not the full tour you don't get to go in the inner workings of the stadium you have lunch in one of the restaurants and then walk pitch side I've also done the return to paradise tour that was a post lockdown in the summer where they still couldn't let you indoors anywhere but you could just walk around the stands basically and I think it only cost a tenner so it was pretty much worth the money but all those things aside and all the games I've been to I've never done the full Celtic Park Stadium Tour. Until today, it kicks off for me in about 10-15 minutes. I'm going to have a quick look around the outside as if I need to do that. I've made so many videos here before, but if you could hit that like button and subscribe, that would be fantastic. Thank you very much. Before we go inside, and I'm sure we'll find out loads about the club, and I cannot wait to see the full inner workings of Celtic Park. I think from different things I've seen, I've seen I think the boardroom which has a few trophies in it. I've obviously been pitch side for the walk on for the restaurant thing like I was saying, but I've never seen the changing rooms. There's certain areas of the stadium I'm still yet to go into. Uh, but before we go in there, let me tell you a few facts about Celtic Park. So um, the capacity is 60,411, uh, just over 60,000, uh, give or take a few seats. And um, it is the biggest football stadium in Scotland and the eighth largest stadium in the United Kingdom. It is is also known as Parkhead or Paradise and is of course home to Celtic Football Club. It's on the east side of Glasgow and Celtic have actually played here or on this kind of plot of land since 1892. However, the modern version of Celtic Park that we see today was renovated around the mid to late 90s, 1994-ish, around the year that your favorite YouTuber was born. The record attendance here was over 83,000 for an old firm match in 1938. So yeah, that's an extra, what, 23 odd thousand people from what can fit inside there now. Of course, everything was standing back in those days. Um, but yeah, what a cool stage Stadium, buzzing to finally get inside properly. Hope you enjoy the vid. This is a wonderful football club with a wonderful history, a wonderful story, and we're going to get right into it. My name's Matthew, and I'll be your tour guide for around about the next hour or so. And like I said, welcome in, welcome to Celtic Park. It's a special place, this. It's a special stadium, it's a special football club. Just this morning, I watched the guys, some of the sort of facilities team here taking down the tributes which are which were outside to Bertie Ault, who of course passed away a few weeks ago. You see the tribute here in the middle of the cabinet to Bertie, one of the Lisbon Lions, one of that famous team who won the European Cup for Celtic in 1967, which we'll talk about as we progress on. For you guys as well, who are just football supporters with us, it's an instantly recognisable trophy. It's the greatest prize in club football in Europe, of course, and Celtic have got the great honour I've been able to say that we have been champions of Europe. Now, it's such a special achievement, and there's a few reasons why it's so special. We'll run through them. First of all, Celtic were the first club from the UK to win the European Cup, which is something, of course, that's a real point of pride, being a Scottish football club, <coughs> that we were the first from the UK to win this. So before Manchester United, who won it the following season, beat Benfica 4-1 at Wembley, they won the European Cup in 1968, but before they achieved that, before Liverpool started to win their European Cups, and before Aston Villa, Nottingham Forest, Chelsea, before those teams, it was Celtic. We were also the first club from the north of Europe as well to win the European Cup, which is often forgotten. We won that European Cup with a team of locals. The 11 players who played that afternoon in Lisbon were all Scottish. They all came from within 30 miles of where you're standing right now which in itself is quite magnificent. If you take Bobby Lennox out of the equation, Bobby Lennox came from Saltcoats, which is on the west coast of Scotland, 30 miles away. If you take Bobby out of the question for a second, the other 10 Lisbon Lions came from within 10 miles of where you're standing. They genuinely were locals to this club. They went out and conquered Europe.
And the tour is moving on now, but look, I've been in this room before, but it's brilliant to take it in. And some of the stories um, that we were just hearing there to start off the tour were unbelievable. But um, just before we do move on, I want to show you the Glasgow Cup and some of the teams that have won it on here. Third Lanark on there, Clyder on there. You'd expect that the Glasgow Cup would obviously have been won by Celtic and Rangers, but great to see uh, Third Lanark and even Clyde on there too. It's always interesting to see where people go when they come out of the dressing room. Young Celtic supporters right now make a beeline for the top corner. For Kyogo and Jota, I see young Celtic supporters, but, you know, me as well, I mean, you know, they're absolutely superb, brilliant players, Kyogo, what a striker he is, fantastic, 13 goals and hoops already, for Kyogo, Jota, beside him, what a winger, you know, Celtic, through the years, we're talking about European Cup final, but through the years, through our history, you know, we've always been sort of fans of attacking football, of inventive football, so that's why players like Kyogo and Jota are so popular, are they saying him? Yeah, what's that? Are they going to sign him? Hopefully. I mean, I hope so. I, I'm saying that as a fan, no. I, I wish I was privy to that information. But surely, he's absolutely superb. really is. Some great players are amongst the Celtic team. This is it. This is the area that the first team get prepared for the matches. Now, this hasn't always been the home dressing room here at Celtic Park. So, for example, the Lisbon Lions wouldn't have used this as the dressing room. The dressing rooms at that point in time would have been where the doctor's room is, or the dope testing room, which you've probably seen uh, as you pass by there as well. Uh, but through the years, this main stand, which is the stand that we're in today, has been sort of redeveloped and, and had a lot of work done on it, and some things have changed position and so on. We'll talk a little bit about this stand, the history of it, as we move further round towards the tunnel and so on. But you can imagine what the atmosphere must be like in here on a match day. This has been the home dressing room. So it's around about the late 1990s and the early 2000s. So, Henrik Larsson, for example, would have used this room uh, during his time at Celtic. And Henrik, when he played for Celtic, sat up in the corner there where Callum McGregor's jersey is hanging just now. Callum McGregor and Henrik Larsson using the same walker. Here is the shirt of everyone's favourite Celtic player just now, Kyogo, next to Jota as well, probably everyone's second favourite player at the moment. But yeah, in the Celtic dressing room just now. And, um... This is one of the places that I've not been yet in Celtic Park. This is one of the reasons I wanted to come today. And it's fantastic to be in here. Henrik Larsson used to sit in that corner, but yeah, not as spacious as what I thought it would be, but still pretty cool. Javi and Iniesta, Mbappe, Neymar, all these massive names in European football that through the, through the years have lined up right there about to make this journey, this walk up the tunnel. This tunnel has been here since 1929, which was when the core of the main stand was first built. So generations of Celtic players, some of the greatest names in Celtic's history and in the history of the sport of football have walked this way and you're about to do the same thing yourselves. Now, our friend Sam is joining us today. Sam uh, has quite a prolific YouTube presence. <laughs> Sam's making a video today for his YouTube. So I'm going to let Sam come down to the front wow. so that he's got an unobstructed view, an unobstructed shot of this stadium as we walk out here. What an honour. Look at that, an absolutely seamless transition. And these are my canvases that I do still have on sale. Uh, my Celtic Park canvases. I did speak about them in my Hearts vlog. There are still a couple left, but they are selling quickly. Rangers have sold out. Partick Thistle have sold out. And uh, yeah, Celtic will soon be selling out as well. So if you do want them before Christmas, um, then I'll leave them in the top link in the description box below. And they are in limited numbers. They're completely free postage. You get a free hanging kit as well. Handwritten note from me thanking you for your purchase. I will send them out pretty 
much the day that you get them, if not the next day. And um, yeah, I've only had positive reviews. So top link in the description box below really supports my channel. Thank you very much. What an absolute legendary guy for letting me go first and getting the uh, shots that you are currently witnessing here from down here at Celtic Park. An unbelievable ground and um, the tour is actually amazing. I'm really not showing you a huge amount of what we're getting told on the tour because I'd love for you to come and do it yourself. Some of the stories you get told here are better than some of the other tours I've ever been on. I've been on a lot now. Um, but yeah, finally, amazing to be at this one. Um, after all this time, all the times I've been in for like half tours here and there, they're getting the full experience now and you have to check this out. I have covered a lot of Celtic's history and past before, um, such as Jimmy Johnston, Jock Steen, brother Walfred and Billy McNeil. Um, so yeah, if you do want to check out some more of my Celtic vids, either search Celtic footy adventures or just go to the description box. I'll link a load of uh, Celtic vids down there But I'm buzzing that I finally got to do this full tour some of the stories that Matthew was telling us a shout out to him What a tour guide really nice guy said he's been a season ticket holder here for 21 years He works in the boardroom on match day So some of the access that he gets to this club must be amazing for him as a fan But yeah, the tour was made by him and some of the stories that he was telling us about Celtic being a club Which was founded by brother Walfred um, to help starving children Children in Glasgow back when that was a real issue of course it still is a slight issue I guess with the free school meals thing that we've seen over the last year or so um, but nothing to the extent of what it was back in the 1800s when people were living in proper poverty in Scotland brother Wolfred set up the club to be able to help feed young children of Glasgow and uh, turned it into a club now that just welcomes anybody and that's what Matthew said at the end it is a club for everyone and I've always felt welcomed here when I've come to Celtic Park I've made a lot of Rangers videos before and from some of the comments you get from making videos about both sides, you'd think it wouldn't be that safe for me to go to either club. But genuinely, whenever I've come to Celtic Park, everyone has always been so nice. And it's the same at Ibrox. No one really brings up what you've done with the other club. I think the vast majority of people know that I just want to spread the word about Scottish football and let you all know how good it is. The match day experience and all the experiences that you do get at Scottish clubs is way better than any other country in the world. I can assure you of that. A huge thank you for watching. If you haven't done the Celtic Park stage, tour before then what are you waiting for make sure you get here and do it I've not been paid to say that I genuinely just really enjoy coming to do these tours and if I can spread uh, the word about all these great places with you then I will do that for the rest of time thank you so much again I'll leave some videos on screen please hit that like button please subscribe if you haven't already we're into vlogmas now um, I'm filming this on the last day of November it will come out in December so yeah content galore basically every single day up until Christmas can't believe I just said that I've got to do it now Thank you so much and I'll see you in the next one.